Good evening. It is Thursday at 7 o'clock. I do see some folks already in house. I actually have another laptop open so I can still see the chat no matter what. So if you see me reaching over to one side, I am using chat on another one. So hopefully it's coming through okay. Um, not sure on how it's playing on everybody else's end here. Hang on just a second here. Let me change a setting on my other laptop. Hopefully I'm not lagging or anything. It looks like it says it's here, no drop frames. Should be able to hear me. Um, looks like we're all good to go on my end, so hopefully everybody is okay. I got Cornelius, how you doing Cornelius? Got Greg Murray and Dom right below Greg. How is everybody doing? <coughs> I sent Dom a text last night. Last thing I did at midnight. Hey, you two. Uh, I saw that you saw my uh, answer on there. We'll set something up when things seem a little better here. Um, I'm sure I can get the wife to come out for something like dinner or something. Uh, hope all is good. We are working on Ink Frog and Shopify trying to get them all set up. Same here. Um, I am had to put mine on hold, um, but from this point going forward, and the title pretty much finally done listing through eBay, we're listing just through Ink Frog. We've, every day since uh, two days ago, everything's been Ink Frog only. No other listing options we're using. So as of now, I'm not listing through eBay itself at all. Everything is strictly on Ink Frog. And then at the end of the day, I just export everything into Shopify all at once. So list an item, open up another one, another, 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 another. It's, it's, literally about the same speed maybe just a hair quicker listing through ink frog i do like ink frogs um photo cropping because you can just slide a bar in and it's like perfect it just doesn't sort the images when you upload two of the same in images the way i'd like it to do so that's the only issue that i have with it hang on just a second here this one's frozen so one of mine's frozen but we still have uh, feet on the other one again uh, let's see who else is in the house. Give me a second here. Dom is on the top three. Um, the one and only Corbin. How are you doing? Cleveland. I get to Cleveland once in a while. Uh, we were down in Cincinnati not too long ago as well, too, which is a long drive from us, like four hours or so. Uh, let's see here what we got going on. Yeah, Dom got his flood stuff mostly fixed, I do believe. Uh, Greg, Let's see if I got that one over here, if this one's working again. Nope, guess not. Uh, method of sending offers to buyers, do you typically do a certain percentage off or a certain dollar amount off? It depends on the item. I mean, it depends on what I have. Like paper items, I'm already doing three times up. So if I do 30% off, um, I'm still over, what would that be? That would be uh, like 40% above what everybody else is still selling it at. I don't really, or yeah, 40%, yeah. So I don't really worry about that. It, it Like, let's say I've got a $100 item. I may send an offer for $75. Bucks. Um, I may send an offer for $57.50 if it's been sitting up for a while and it's that $100 item. Again, I've marked it up, so I'm not really worried. Um, I mean, there's no set number. I do every one, one at a time. I, I Every single one. Uh, there's not a time where I batch them together at a specific amount off or... A specific percentage or anything I can't do that with the items because they're all different they're all you know price wise differently based on the specific type of item that it is so I don't have any standard hey 30% off is fine some things like certain record categories or something 30% off would be fine that's usually what I would do in like a record category or something you know but I'm not triple pricing or up pricing anything in the record category usually I just price it on the high end of where they fall and then you know go from there based on the condition of the record I hope that makes sense but I don't have any certain dollar amount at all hey rich how are you doing mr. Sanders oh, this one's still still tied up on that one good thing I opened another one hey Carl how's Carl doing in sunny Florida today I got Penny right below, Carl. Welcome in this evening, Penny. And Daryl is right below. How you doing, Daryl? Hope you're doing well. Uh, hey, Bob. I just texted or I answered your back on something. I was on, uh, for those in Patreon, I have a 
crash course video and classic vintage vinyl that's up right now so um just went up it's like uh 35 or 40 minutes somewhere in that range um and it goes into what to look for so those in patreon if you haven't been to patreon yet you're hitting the live show after the live show head on over to patreon you've got another video up too there'll still be one more this weekend or i'll do a live one on sunday for patreon i'm not sure which yet depends on if i get an answer back on the csv file from amazon if i do we'll do a live show and talk about that uh let's see here hey marty how you doing this evening hope you and your other half are doing well there's duncan right there from sunny well i don't know if it's sunny from australia be nice to have 30 minutes warning for the show so i can be first yeah, I was running a little behind. I, I do that occasionally. This week has been fairly hectic. I've been out of the office for almost two and a half days with drive time and picking stuff up um, and buying out some things. There's some businesses that we went in on with somebody and purchased parts of it. And then I had to orchestrate meeting them and divvying up equipment and stuff like that so that's where it gets a little bit uh, tough on my schedule because I gotta kind of sync with several other people so we're all fair about everything um, that's that's usually where I have issues plus I've had some hauls again I'm safe I'm using the mask I don't touch my face my anything and you know come straight home I don't drive around to any place we just go to where I'm going and I'm done um, I don't go to restaurants or anything yet still or anything like that not with the rise Hey, Aaron, how you doing this evening? Good to see you in here, Mr. Glug. Cindy right below. How you doing, Cindy? Hope you are doing well. And Summers 422, good evening as well. Applebee's Attic Treasures, how you doing? Steve Alot, anyone know good accountants in Las Vegas? That I couldn't help you with. Check the Better Business Bureau. Check for criminal records as well, too. Something I always do. Oh, uh, well, here's, let's see if this is working. I guess the one screen is hit or miss. Let me pop back up here. Again, the title. Let me say the title one more time. Finally done listing through eBay. We do not list anything to go on eBay on eBay anymore. It's all through Ink Frog at this point, which was a accomplishment considering how many listings we have, current and active, and how many items we had to map and the whole work. So it's gotten a lot... Uh, two months into it this point just to switch over fully so we had a training day the other day so everybody in here knows how to list just through ink frog now um, and that's all they're doing now too so good plus for us i don't have to worry about switching over later nobody has a problem works fine i can upload or, or sync it back to shopify at the end of the night and that way i can just go and double check everything that's been listed for the day so as I said, we had a test run um, two and a half days ago, and then the last two days have all been listing. Got another employee back, too, so I'm not doing too bad right now. Things are improving. Um, big difference a day makes. You know, you never know. That's why I don't try to dwell on anything that happens. Um, where did I go here? Hang on. Yeah, it's my fault, though, um, um, Duncan, this time for not having a warning up early. Uh, Johnny Hot Rod, how are you doing this evening? I always like that name. Well, good to have you on either way, Johnny. I know, I know how it is sometimes to take your shoes off and not want to have to get up and do anything. It's so usually by the end of the day, I've had my shoes on all day long, and I've got a foot issue. Um, so for me, um, it's just nice to put my foot up, honestly. I have wore a, a walking surgical boot for like two and a half years. Uh, let's see here. Kathy from Queensland. Yep, I think I mentioned um, mentioned uh, you in there too. Well, that's very nice of you, Duncan. Kathy is a very, very pleasant person. Do you keep a written copy of what bin you put your items in? I use the custom SKU to let me know where my items are, but I wonder if I could... Hang on. If you look at my titles on eBay, every one has the bin that they're in in the title. Um, you can use a custom SKU, but I think it's just easier as long as there's no violation to do so. Um, if there is, then I'd have a huge issue having to go back and fix them. Going with Shopify, uh, we do plan on removing all of those for a certain point going forward, so all new ones won't have them. But it'll be universal because on Amazon, you're not really supposed to have 
a code like that on there. They've never said a word in the historical section, though, so just FYI. Yeah, you talk, Rich, talking about it could be lost, like the pictures they lost. They, I think it was like, geez, it was millions of you, like 18 million or maybe it was even more than that users. They lost millions and millions, tens of millions of photos. So, yeah, if it's in a separate field, it could be a possibility. There's only like three keys that are tied to your listing, and it's the photo, the one photo, just one photo is tied to the mainframe, your 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 structure of your listing it's the one photo your title and price are basically like the keys if one of those changes you're going to have a different search result the minute you change one of those three things if the photos like photo two photo three all the way through photo 12 are on a different server they're not tied to the listing so if they lose something and i would say probably that custom skew could be on the same basic principle maybe not tied to the main listing it might be i don't know but i'm not going to trust it either again i just throw it in the title it's never done me wrong and it's easier for the employees to figure it out we're all in the same wavelength we all know where it's going to be i don't have to worry about clicking or them not figuring out to click a button to show the custom skew or anything like that it's just easier to to remember with, if you do it in a custom SKU line, you're you're doing one more step. I mean, we just do a title, a price, and then the photos. You know, condition depending on you know what the item is, of course. But uh, it would be another box. It'd be another the number five item that we'd have to address on each individual listing. If you just do it in the title, I do sequential orders, so I can just add one number or something to my bin number in the title when they switch from one bin to the other. Because the guys who are listing here. Once they've listed for a few hours, chances are they're into another bin or even two, depending on how many items they're listing in an hour. Um, I think yesterday several people were running around 26, 27 items an hour. Of course, they're all you know ready to go. They're all on a card. All they got to do is plop them in. Everything's priced. So, And half of the title on most of the items were the same type of item, so they're only changing a couple of words. So it's pretty quick, but I think that's about the best... 26 27 items you can do in an hour i mean i can probably get like 30 if i'm really really busting it not paying enough attention to everything but you know 26 27 we were happy with hey annie how do you do heidi ho all i can think about is mr hanky from south park well thank you almer i appreciate saying come on in and say hello nobleness d how are you doing um I got a membership for this channel. I've had it for a long time. I haven't posted anything up here, but I had some suggestions on, on some um, emojis. So you might see a channel membership offer for emojis. I think you got to click. It's not going to be like some advertisement. I don't really know how it works yet, but I've got four emojis, and I'll just leave it be a surprise for those who might be interested. Um, as opposed to a channel membership, I've got Patreon, so I haven't used the membership services. I do have new shirts in-house that will be helpful to everybody who sells similar items. You'll see them here very shortly. Um, I haven't even tried them on yet, so maybe next week, maybe the week after, I don't know. As soon as I can get a chance to try them on, um, they'll be interesting. It's not necessarily tied to me, but it'll be something helpful. Let's just put it that way. Uh, hey, Ben, how are you doing? Ben Road down there. Uh, yeah, I saw you had commented, Ben, on that postcard. I think that was one of maybe Daryl's postcards. There's Kathy. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Yeah, I got some Australian stuff in the other day. I'll have to take a picture and post it in there for you. Uh, it's mostly military. Uh, I got a whole bunch of Australian World War One and World War Two buttons. Uh... Beautiful hot day. Yeah, it's pretty hot. It was 100 degrees or so. I think at... Like 8.30 this morning, it was like 92 outside. Robert, how are you doing this evening? Hot in Ohio, yeah, 92 out of 8-something. My dog's down here already. Oh, yeah, th there's Ka uh, Kathy thanking Duncan as well. Good to hear that you got some help on there. I'll be happy to help, obviously, whatever you need there too, Kathy. Duncan's close by, though. I don't know if that's a big plus. Plus, you guys have the same eBay setup, I would imagine. Manage payments. My students are getting sorry refund payment failed error. Have you had reports of this error? 
I have not seen anything like that, no. Darlene, how are you doing? Toronto, I've been to Toronto before. I think that's the Panasonic or pa uh, Panasonic Tower, I think, is in Toronto, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me slide down here a little bit. Susan A, sweltering in PA, yeah, that's pretty much what it is here. Humidity for a month, East Coast Canada. Yeah, it's been pretty humid here. I don't really, I've been inside most of the time, other than picking stuff up or running out to a store when I have to. Unicorns don't die. Newbie questions are all postcards that look like photographs or are there other photo looking cards that are actually something else there's a ton of uh, photo light cards they're not all real picture real photo postcards take a loop and if you see dots it's not a photo um, and again it depends on what's on the back too sometimes the back you can just see most photos are shiny literally it's a real photo so it's shiny but not all of them you'll see some that are red those are real photos those are uh, uh, cyanotypes there's a amber, what's it, uh, what's the other one? There's a red one too. Ferrotypes, I think, is the other one that are red. But those are real, real photos. They just look like a red image. Everything's normal. It's just all red or blue, depending on what type of photo it is. But it, there's a ton, you know, that aren't real photos. So you really got to pay attention. Some of the chromes look like real photos and things like that. The real photo, the RPPCs you're looking for, are all going to be black and white as well too. Anything that's color is going to be in some modern day, you know, not related to an RPPC. And uh, you will run into some colored real picture, real photo postcards that have been hand colored. Uh, that's different. You should be able to see that. That's literally where somebody takes paint over a black and white photo and then they color the sky blue and things like that too. I may show how to do that because I actually have vintage paint from the 20s and 30s that was used back then to paint postcards from a shutdown postcard business. And I've used it before, just playing around with it, but um, works great. It dries on, on the, uh, the photo without issue, and, and that's something rare unless you spend the money to get like very specific paint, like cell vinyl or something from Cartoon Color, if you know what that is. Cartoon Color supplies the vinyl paint for animation cells. They also supply the animation cells. They used to supply Disney with all of their material. I don't know who does these days, but uh, when I worked at Disney, I did some work with animation, and the head of uh, ink and paint back then was a, a lady named Fran Kirsten, and if you look like in um, Little Mermaid and stuff like that, she's like one of the directors, art department directors, not like director of the movie, but um, she was very helpful to me in doing stuff at Disney and stuff like that, so uh, anyway, hopefully that helps you a little bit there. Sunday Funday, Pamela Saban, how are you doing this evening? Gail McCarr, how are you doing in Georgia? I've spent some time in Georgia too. Valdosta, we usually stopped by when we drive from Ohio down to Florida area. Valdosta was usually like the midway, 12-hour, 14-hour spot. And then we drive down from Valdosta afterwards, down to Orlando area. I did stay in Glen Burn as well too for a couple months, if anybody knows where that at that's at Gale. You probably do, I would imagine. Of course, we've been to Atlanta a million times. Uh, Amy, how are you doing? Goring from Houston. I've been to Houston as well. Austin was pretty cool. Dallas wasn't bad. I worked in Dallas for a little while when I was working for Einstein Brothers, the bagel company. I was a regional for them. Wendy, how are you doing this evening? Hi from the Netherlands. How are you doing? The Warlord 1944. Good evening. Good to have you on. I buy stuff from the Netherlands fairly often. Uh, I use the eBay uh, Dutch site and we buy a lot of Weebles from there. Um, so I am familiar with a lot of the shipping and all that kind of stuff on there. I've used, um, I think, nine of the eBay sites um, in general. We have either account or it's synced with our U.S. account. Just FYI, it's something you can do. But the Netherlands site for Weebles is really good. They're called Bidabulas, B-I-D-U-L, or was it B-I-D-I-L-U-E-S? If I wrote it down, I'd be able to spell it. I'm sure I just spell, hacked that name terribly. Bidabulas, though, is what they're called in, in uh, Europe. Stratus9, how are you doing? Good name there. Tim Lester, first time from Kentucky. We've been through Kentucky a million times. I, I don't mind Kentucky at all. Um... Covington, obviously, we get through quite often. 
Uh, I've worked in Lexington for quite, well, on and off for maybe six straight weeks um, in Lexington area. Lots of good stores. I did go to the, the thrift stores in Lexington when I was staying there. I had a lot of free time. Bob logged on to the Ink Frog site today and thought about using them. Not yet, but probably soon. Take your time on doing anything. As as those who have been following, it's been now, we're going towards our third month with everything signed up, and I'm still not live at all. You can't buy a thing from my Shopify as of right this second. Again, I want to have it all down and have everything set up correctly. And then we're moving with it. As soon as that's all set, which we're getting close. I just have some things to do this weekend. And once that's caught up, I think we'll be on the, the goal to have it done within, say, two more weeks. I got the st uh, staff back to map everything. So mapping 1,400, or not 1,400, 14,000 listings, um, I think at this point we're going to have to have mapped one by one. It's a real quick process. You can do like two in a minute. So... I put a couple people to it in a week or two of labor. I should be good to go. I know you can pay a company or something to do it, too, from what I saw, but I'm just going to be done with my labor and do it in-house. Uh, if you're ever in Cincy again, let me know. I live a mile from downtown. Oh, well, that's good to know. We did buy some of the... the I, I bought a partial warehouse from Cincinnati. It's a deal I had been working on for quite some time from a defunct company that went out of business in the 20s. And the stuff has just been setting in the warehouse since, like, since 1920s, apparently, you know. The people who've rented out other space never touched the attic, never touched the basement or anything, so. Which I'm not surprised. We've been down to downtown buildings down here in Toledo area. You know, like, eight, nine, ten-story buildings that, you know, the top five floors have, haven't been touched in... 30, 40 years, which is surprising, but, you know, one of the buildings we were at a few years ago, downtown Toledo, was um, an auction guy, and he just used this seven-story building for storage, and he filled this place up, and at the end of the day, the owner kicked the guy, you know, he didn't pay his bills, so he had all this money wrapped up in all the merchandise, he, he it was his now, the owner of the building, so he pay, he was five bucks, you could take an elevator and fill that elevator up with anything you can get out of the building for five bucks, and I mean, I filled up the van so many times it was wasn't even funny. That's one of the best deals I've gotten for money wise investment. It was five bucks, man. It was just crazy. But he even at the end of the day, after doing that for, I think I went to three different uh, weeks of the auction. Um, it was still full. I mean, he had to have a company come in there, and he, I think he told me he spent like six eight weeks with a company coming in there and cleaning the building out. Uh... Yeah, error-wise, I am getting a lot of errors. Um, when I send out offers or I accept one, instead of coming up with the accept screen, uh, screen it says, uh, it's not uh, you, it's us. I get that constantly. So then that means i got to go pop back in to see if it actually accepted it because you don't know for sure, so it might not have accepted it and you have to go back in. And I probably get the it's not you, it's us screen now. Like, And I'm not listing all day long, so my employees are getting it far more than that. But I probably see it six to ten times every single day, even if I'm just briefly on eBay, it seems like, these days. Uh, let me see here. See which one's working the best. <clears throat> Yeah, there's Carl talking about the pix pixels, little dots. Use a a loop. It's called half toning. Those little dots. It's um like a graded screen that goes in it, and those are uh, a different printing process. You can't print like a real photo with those processes, and they're half tones. I worked on a camera that did that converted real photos to half tones when I worked for a magazine. So. Hi from Maine, Harlan. How are you doing? I have spent some time in Maine. We spent some time up in Boston. We drove through all of New England. It was just awesome up there, I have to say. I really enjoyed the East Coast up in that area. It was just, we were there in the fall and there was just fields of flowers everywhere. It was just really neat. You know, every other house seemed uh, Washington slept here or somebody slept here or slept there. It was really nice. Hang on just a second here. I have a child that had to do something today. Uh... I'm sorry, just a second here. Okay, sorry. Oh, where are we at now? 
Gatineau, Quebec, Canada. My son was there. I can tell. That's the exact. My son actually was in that town. Jay Corsal, um He went to Quebec. They went through the whole area. They went to the uh, National Canadian National Military Museum. I think. I know they went to one of the mints in Canada too. It was really nice from what I see. And they were there for like some major uh, parade or major um, holiday, maybe it was. Hey, Daryl, you didn't have to do that, man. Thank you for the super chat, Daryl. I know you do a lot, but every thought about doing podcasts. Yeah, somebody else said something about podcasts, but I don't know. I don't have a lot of time to spread out. I take a lot of grief from not answering um you know, comments and questions and emails off off sites and stuff. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to do that. Um, my priority, obviously, for those who know, is is Patreon um, because they do their. It's a paid service, and they're they're more vested in it than everybody else. I would say again, not trying to be discriminatory against who is or isn't in there, but Patreon is the only one that I always answer. Um, other than that, I I don't have the time. I don't know how most people find the time if they're full-time resellers to spend hours answering um, comments and questions and in, in emails. If, if like right now, so I haven't answered emails on, on my, um, I've got several email addresses that I share that most people have seen, but on the one from this channel, there's probably 700 emails on there right now that I haven't touched. And that's just from like the last 12 days. I don't have, there's no way I can answer what I get in. You know, a lot of them are just offers for money or to advertise on the show, and I don't do that either. Just like the questions or the comments below on one video, there might be 60 just from the morning overnight sometimes on a video or on some several videos. So I can't answer 60 or 70 of those and, and then 60 e uh, emails on top of it. I've spent a couple hours every day of the week trying to answer everything, and I can't do that because that's not, I make my money from reselling. I'm not, I know I'm on a social network and all that stuff, but I'm not, I don't, this isn't where most of my money comes from. You know, this is just something I like to do, and we do get paid for it, but it's not like, you know, some big fortune like I can retire or anything. Um, I hear people saying, you're making so much money on YouTube. It's, it's not that much money, uh, believe it or not, but um, I like talking about what I do, so, you know, for me, it's great. But uh, anyway, but thanks again there, Daryl. Uh, hang on, where are we at? J.I., please thank your wife for the Weebles video. I have been waiting to see it and look forward to seeing the next one. The next one should be out next week on the Weebles video. Um, we're just doing some more, a couple more shots we got to do. Um, I changed something, and then uh, other than that, it's all ready to go. Um, I'll have to reprocess one of them. Uh, I've got seven of them already done, basically. So I spent one weekend, I just locked myself away, and I just did videos the whole time. I, my eyes were frazzled by the end of that, let me tell you. But... I got them all done, pretty much. I will let her know there, J.I. Thank you very kindly. Larry's Treasures, how are you doing this evening? Good to have you on. Hey, Claudia, how are you doing? California. I've been to Whittier, um, Los Angeles. Mostly in that area is where I, I was at. The Einstein Brothers had a big, huge processing plant in Whittier, California. So I did get out there. Uh, let's see here, Duncan had a buyer try to buy four or buy under four different IDs a while back. Then he started saying all oh, four lots not received. Reported to eBay and they stopped his account. Yeah, I see stuff like that once in a while. I haven't had one like that in uh, quite some time, but uh, usually it's pretty easy to prove and eBay is pretty much on there. You can check the address from the cities. Once before I had somebody uh, buy and then I, he was just a jerk and it was somebody who I had blocked and then um, I called eBay and sure enough it was from the same zip and everything and same item, same amount, same everything. They instantly shut them all down, all of his accounts. Of course, you know, they can keep opening them up. Isn't much that you can do to stop that. Let me hop over here. That one's frozen. I'm glad I opened another one though. Hang on, let me slide down to see where we were back at. Strictly Kathy. Yeah, I think Dom's got most of it done. Hey, Daryl, how are you doing this evening? M. Scott Schaffernoth, how are you doing? Yep, 
Yes, Kathy, there is another one up there. Morris C. Selling vinyl scares me. Not sure why that would scare you. I have not had any issues selling vinyl. Um, other than when we first started not knowing the conditions strictly. Um, if you sell certain things, the the collectors are very strict on, on that. There's a movie called Thick as Thieves with Alec Baldwin. And he's a... Well, he's a hit. He's not a hitman. He's a uh, a robber, a bank robber, basically a safe guy, and um, he's a record collector of early jazz. And he's in a record shop. I love that scene. He's in there with a the flashlight, looking at it at an angle, and he's talking about a scratch that's between grooves to the record owner, trying to get money off of this two hundred dollar record. It, 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 that's how picky some of the the uh, people are. If you want to see that scene, I'm sure if you type in thick as thieves and uh, record you should be able to see that that clip there because it's really a good clip i mean that's how tedious and i've been to places that you know people will do that with the flashlight gloves and the whole works to look at it and they'll be nitpicking over uh, uh it's basically a slide line in my book when it's between grooves on the upside of the the disc but anyway Hang on, let me pop down. In fact, this one's already frozen again. Yeah, see, I've got to have two laptops open just to run a show. Yeah, I do share stuff on Patreon. Um, thanks, Duncan, with that on postcards. Right now, I put up video, what's it, number 171. And I think there's probably another half a dozen that aren't numbered. So heading towards 200 videos in Patreon, and they're all fairly specific, and they're all even um, like a tag. So you can just search for certain items in the Patreon as well. Captain Wackencracker, how are you doing? How you two doing? Peoria, huh? I've been through Peoria once in my life. Didn't stop, drove through. Gimbley, how are you doing this evening as well? New Freedom 21, welcome. That reminds me of the Trailer Park Boys, Freedom 21. Morris C., you sell on Discogs? Yes, that is a confirmed. I also sell records on Amazon as well. Um, and they do very well on Amazon, depending on what you list. Mostly 78 sell better there, probably universally wise, because it's um, foreign. It's a foreigners buy a lot from Amazon for that kind of thing. Yeah, stock-wise, no. I've, I've had dozens of people hit me up and say, you know, you want to sell some bulk stock. What I showed in that video is like a tenth of our small back stock. I mean, it's it's a small portion. That's not counting tens of thousands of records, boxes that I haven't even touched and stuff. Um, I, that's just a small part. What you saw in that video is literally a staging area. That's, that's literally where I sit and have to look at that all the time. It's not usually full at all. It's usually just stuff that I'll sort through. Or I'll wait till I get a few more things in, and then it'll go together. I have a 90-day plan, so everything's staged in that area for 90 days. Not not sitting in that area, but staged. So, like, I might not want to list certain things I get for 90 days, or even six months sometimes if it's like Christmas items or something. But I have had a lot of people asking on selling bulk inventory. I don't sell bulk inventory with like the buttons and stuff. We're working on a book. I've I've got kids here that my sons that have been. Uh, photographing buttons. I built a little stand and the whole works. Um, wife's been researching some of the stuff that's going to go in it. We've already got it categorized by chapters and all that kind of thing. But um, I, I've been working on a, a 78 book and, and it's sad that the book with the buttons, which I've started well after the 78 book, might be done first just because I own all of the items that are going to go in the book. If you're trying to put a book together and you don't own the items, I can't risk using like eBay photos and things like that for a book because you don't own those those photos and there is a rule on eBay that says you can't rip off the photos so using them in a video that's that's like educational is one thing but using them in a book that you're going to directly profit off I, I, you can't do so that's my issue with my my 78 book it's it's gonna get done at some point and I have got you know quite a bit of it done but 
the photos. Oh my gosh, I've never knew that there's such a a tight click of people that supply you know photos for books and things like that. They only do them for their friends or their buddies. There must be some kind of like kickback or something. I don't know what, but you know it's hard pressed to get people to share stuff. You know, otherwise, you know, and and I can't just rip a picture from a book again because I don't have permission to use that picture from the book either. Even if it's educational, there are rules and all that too. So it, it's it runs into a nightmare trying to do stuff like that in certain fields again because unless you own every item you're going to photo in that book, you you just can't grab someone's photo. And I know a lot of people put guides together, you know, even for like eBay guides and stuff, and they just use eBay shots. I, I would use my own or at least eliminate anything advertising eBay. Not to diminish or, or do anything with eBay, but I want to have mine a neutral, you know, guide. You know, I don't want to have it guide, steered just towards like eBay. Because again, uh, when I look at my sales, I'm not looking at eBay. I'm not looking at Hip or Amazon or Etsy, Discogs or any of the platforms around. I'm looking at the big picture these days. I don't I don't dwell on just one site anymore. Again, that's why Hip Hip. And all these other things are going to mingle so well with, you know, going through Shopify and using Inkfrog to do it. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Uh-oh, you sent an email about Duncan. I'll have to look that one up there. I think I missed somebody here. Let's. I got TG. Hang on. Let me go back up just a little bit. Yeah, my feed's all over. I guess I'll stick back to this one. Uh, let me pop down. And see who else we else got going on. Uh, Susan A. I was just listing Victorian trade cards. Your eBay store has helped me with pricing and some wordings. Thank you very kindly. Yeah, I uh, have quite a few up in my store. I think we got like 14,000 Victorian items up. That's like, I probably have 10 times that as well in Victorian items in paper right this very second in stock. But, you know, that's something I'm not in a rush to, to list up. I think we are one in five of all Victorian items in the paper section. Or we were a few months back when I checked. So one out of every five on eBay was us at, at that point. Uh... Well, thank you there, Kathy, as well. What is Ink Frog? Gail wants to know what Ink Frog is. Um, why is my feed just all over there? Hang on just a second here. My feed's on one's popping, and it's kind of confusing. Um, Ink Frog is a... It's like a bridge between Shopify and eBay. It, it's just a tool, I would say, an application. It doesn't sell anything directly, but what it does is it syncs anything you you cross list to Shopify with eBay, and and um, it avoids using the eBay channel on Shopify. The eBay channel on Shopify does not allow managed payments for one, and it does not allow you to do um, best offer. Inkfrog does everything that you need, and Inkfrog basically backs up your photos as well. Um, it's thirty bucks a month for what you know, how many listings I have with Inkfrog. So, you know, it's not a, a any big huge cost. It's less than four hundred for a year. Um, so it's just the tool to allow me to still do best offer and use Shopify. If I sell something on Shopify, Inkfrog takes it down from eBay. That's the key to it. I want everything to be synced, so if something sells on one platform, it's gone from the other platform. Uh, that's something that takes me a lot of time when I do it manually. So I got to go back in. Let's say I've got the same item on six sites. If I sell it in one site and I'm not using some app or Shopify or something, I've got to go down at the end of each day and take down that same item from five other sites. Now let's say I sold 50 items that day. I got to take those 50 items down from five other sites if they're all listed on all six of my sites. That's a lot of work, and that's the reason we had a bottleneck, and that's what Shopify is going to correct when it's up and running correctly. We will list everything in Inkfrog. As of now, that's all we're doing. I'm not listing anything on eBay directly. Everything we list up goes through Inkfrog to eBay, and that way it also goes from Inkfrog to Shopify. 
anything I create in Inkfrog will automatically sync straight up to Shopify so I don't have to map or do any other sync feature because it's taken from Inkfrog first. If you import it from Shopify into Inkfrog, it's different. you got to map them. Unless it automatically maps them. And it only did like 60% of my store at auto map. The rest of them I have to manually map one by one. At, you know, takes a minute to do two mappings. Each map is one listing. You have to map it to the item that is the corresponding item from Shopify to your Inkfrog eBay account. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I do have a video that explains and has the entire thing drawn out with a chart so you can see how it all hooks up so if you search through my videos just type in Shopify it's from the last say five or six weeks at the very most you will see it and it literally shows a chart picture of how it hooks up with arrows and it literally shows a whole plan a whole layout of the whole thing it's a map of what our Shopify ink frog eBay connections will look like so it's it's easier to see it visually in my book from what I can see uh, any suggestions on finding the value of an 1837 Florida historical pin? I cannot find anything on eBay or Amazon. Is the pin actually from, Wendy D., actually from 1837? Or is that some other, um, like an anniversary date or something like that? The uh, Second Seminole Indian Wars would have been going on in 1837, um, unless you're meaning 1937, because I don't know if many historical pins other than, say, some military or some really oddball thing that would have been made in 1837 from Florida. I lived in Florida, and we actually did a lot of uh, metal detecting at some of the Seminole sites from the 1830s. Uh, foggy and rainy in, in Australia, wow. Yeah, you can do a photo search on Google, too. eBay has the option in some categories now, too, if you've noticed. Um, and two, when you go to eBay and you look now, it depends on the category now, but the page looks just like an Amazon page, almost to the T now with how it's all block set up and, and stuff, which was kind of, you know, point proven on what they want to be. Uh, let's see. Let me go back here because it looks like I'm frozen again over there. It's just awkward to look sideways here. And if I miss calling somebody out, I do apologize. I'm going between two and it's a little hard to make sure I'm not missing somebody I don't have a summer slowdown so I'm I don't it depends on what you sell for a summer clothing and stuff and books and, and stuff like that stuff that's like time occupiers like video games and stuff will sell far less when you know it's summer because people are outside more but what I sell collectors collect all year round so again we've switched it up I got rid of things that were high returns. I got rid of things that lots that had chances of, you know, um, being ripped off. We got rid of things that, you know, die off. Like the, the video you saw of the back stock I got. That's all stuff that I can sell all year round. There's no slow time for any of that. It's all small. That's a massive quantity of stuff. If, if you were selling clothing and I had that many pieces of clothing, it would fill up half my house probably. You know, so we've steered our business to things that are easy to sell easy to ship have very low return rates if almost zero they have quick pay rates it's mostly older folks that buy the stuff that I sell they're vintage historical items for the most part I mean it depends on what kind of business you do as to whether you're gonna have a summer slowdown I don't have any summer slowdown my sales are not dipping in any way shape or form if anything they're actually going up because now we're listing again we didn't list very many items if hardly any for like a couple weeks in all honesty which is you know not us but with everything going on I just haven't had you know staff or anything else to get a bunch of listings up so now that we've started listing you know again and we're back rolling the sales are going up right now so the more I list the more I sell if, if I could pay another 10 people to list all day long I would have way more income coming in and it would cover my labor without a doubt but you know I can't find 10 people nor would it be safe at this point uh, it, it is what you make of it to, to, to a good extent, I, I would say, with what you sell. Again, there's certain clothing lines. There's people that just sell clothing. Again, it depends on what they sell. They can you know, keep increasing their sales through summer. They're probably selling summer stuff or stuff you know, that would for a, like a holiday, like 4th of July, just before 4th or something like that.
Good, but resting from the heat. Yeah, I would hate to work. I worked outside in Florida during the summer when I worked at Disney sometimes, and it was hot and miserable. Yeah, Kathy, once the shoes are off, that's the end of the day. I, I, I always hated when if the kids were out somewhere or something, um, you know, and I take my shoes off and they need a ride. I, it's Obviously, I'm going to do it, but it's just it's aggravating. That's one of my pet peeves. When the shoes come off, I just want my day to be done and not have to worry about anything, you know. Today, I've already answered everything on um, Patreon and the video's up. Um, my day's done when this show's done tonight, and that's not usually me. Usually, well, I'll take that back. Um, I'll probably send out offers to watchers, and then it'll be done. That'll probably be, I think I got 37 offers to watchers. Um, and I sent them out, the first group, I think around 2.30, 2.35, somewhere in that range. I send them out all day long. I always send out offers to watchers, but again, I do them one at a time. I, I totally look at each one as they go. I don't care. It's, it's just a few extra minutes. Uh, where are we at now? Thanks again, Johnny Hot Rod. Appreciate everything. Ah, shucks. Okay, Kathy. Sunday fun day, Pamela. Hot in Arizona and thinking we might have another shutdown. Haven't gone out much. Too scary out there. The safety is a huge consideration. Um, my son has a pre-existing condition. Uh, so, yeah, I do worry about stuff like that. I still do function with my business. I do wear the masks. The hardest thing to stop doing when I stop doing is, is to touch your face when you're out in public. Don't ever do that. Um, don't make any contact or anything like that. But um, I'm careful out in public. I only go to certain places. I do go to a picker. Well, I go to several pickers, but I just go there. We keep our distance. You know, I've got a mask on the entire time I'm in, in his place and everything. So you got to do the best you can, you know. Yeah, There's no real answer for any of that yet, obviously. But Hang on, let's get down to some more here. Yeah, let's put, hit the like button if you haven't hit it. I've got 182 people from my end on right now, and i got 62 likes. So if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the like button. It's always nice to get up to that 100 mark before the show ends. And I think every show for the last couple dozen we've hit the hundred mark before the show went and so it'd be really nice if we could get to that number today it does help the uh the feed for the show somewhat too when are you and dom doing a show again i am going to leave that as a surprise but let's just say if you saw dom's video from his live show last night he kind of alluded to something which i'm gonna leave in the the dark here for just a little while longer all I'm going to say is look out for some video uh, info coming out shortly here in the next couple weeks. Um, it, not going to surprise everybody, but it will. there will be some announcements coming out. Um, I'll probably hit up and talk with Dom here maybe tomorrow if I get a little extra time. Today is, is again, uh, yesterday was horrendously long. How many hours did I do yesterday? 12, 17, is that 17 hours? 17, 18, 19... I don't know, like 20 hours I did yesterday. I got up at 5-something. I know I was working by 5.30, and I stopped at midnight. So my brain might be sloshy right now. Uh, however many hours from 5 a.m. to 12 midnight is, that's how long I worked yesterday. Um, again, it's not like work, like I'm, I'm working for somebody else. It's not quite the same, but I get locked in mentally-wise on something, and OCD takes in, and I, I, I can't... I, my brain fights between OCD and attention deficit, so it depends on, on what's going on at the day, but I can't stop something sometimes. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me go back over here because my feed's still frozen over there. Uh, I'll have to figure out another way to put this a little closer. I've got a swing stand for my laptop. Maybe I'll put that up here too. Or maybe I should just put my record one over there and use the... Yeah, I'll switch it around. That's what I should have done today. Sorry, folks. Uh, let's see here. I got your answer on that one there, Aaron. Um, if it's from 1937, uh, it, it'll be a little different. If it's from 1837, there can't be many out there. So if you're trying to use a photo when it is actually from 1837 and not like a anniversary pin or something you're probably not going to find anything similar to it 
And Kathy's still tinkering with her Shopify and Ink Frog. I need to hit up Barbara and see how Barbara's doing with hers. Um, I promise everybody in, in, in Patreon, you're going to see the CSV file. Again, I've my first one was rejected. It's been a little while since I put one together, so you're going to get to see that in Patreon, too. So we're going to CSV file up. We're going to list everything on Inkfrog, and at the same time, I'm going to copy, cut and paste everything into a CSV file, which is basically an Excel spreadsheet. And then we're going to upload everything that I've typed up and listed on Inkfrog for that day on a CSV file to Amazon. And then we're going to map those to Inkfrog so that they can, or not Inkfrog, to Shopify so that they can be pulled down when something sells. That'll link it. So that means if, if once I do that, I'll have it listed on Amazon and eBay and anywhere else, and it will automatically pull it down. So no matter where it sells on using Shopify and Inkfrog to eBay, it's going to pull it down. That's... Ink Frog with Shopify is just free labor, basically. It's 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 a it's a digital version or a online cloud version of a a employee, basically, that's going to take down my listings when they sell from other platforms. That allows me to pump pump out every single listing that I have on all the sites I want to without having to be selective, so I'm not running into you know, selling the same item on two sites. It's happened to me where we've sold the same item on a few sites before, even when I'm diligent. If you miss a day or you miss an item or something, that's where it runs into the issue. And for 60 bucks total a month to, to be covered on all that, it's, it's, it's worth it. I probably would spend 70 or so a, a week in labor to, you know, it's probably seven hours worth of labor. I'd have to say an hour a day to make sure everything's pulled down. So it's it's a saver. It's 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 a labor saver. If you're all by yourself, once you get it up and you start doing Shopify, Ink Frog, and eBay together when you first start your business, it's cheaper than the 60 bucks because you won't have as many listings, but you'll know it all and everything will be linked and synced from the minute you start instead of coming in like me and trying to sync up 50, 60, 70,000 listings from different platforms in different ways. It's just, just that's the hard part, you know. It just didn't exist back then when I started, though, so I couldn't have done the same way. All these channels didn't exist and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, let's pop down to some more questions. I'm going to go for like another 20 minutes. Um, am I abandoning eBay? No, I am not abandoning eBay. Finally done listing through eBay. We are not listing directly on eBay at all. I don't use eBay to list. I don't go to eBay to list. I don't go to eBay to ship. I don't have to do any of that anymore. It's all going through Inkfrog. With Inkfrog, it's automatically set up so I don't have to map. I can export those exact same listings I entered on Inkfrog to eBay and to Amazon or uh, Shopify and then to Amazon. That's that's the route it goes. I, once I list them in Inkfrog as well, they're on eBay. I can also instantly post any listing to Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, any other platform that's available with a channel through, through Shopify. So that's the key. Again, I, I'm talking about this because this is what I am doing. I don't honestly expect anybody watching this video or any of my videos to say, hey, I'm going to buy because Don's doing this. That's not my goal to market to anybody out here. My clientele are very specific and, and very tailored to the vintage stuff that I sell. Most people who are watching my channel are other resellers who want to know how this stuff works. So I'm not marketing. I don't get a dime for talking about Shopify. I don't get a dime for talking about Inkfrog. And I think everybody out there knows eBay would not pay me a dime to talk about them because I'm not very flattering to, to how they do things at all. Probably on one of their hit lists, I would imagine, in my personal opinion. We know they've got them now, so anyway. Um, but I've moved on with all the BS from eBay. We're, we're going full steam. Failure is not an option. That's, that's, that's what I think at this point. Um, for me, it's motivation, everything that's happened. And right afterwards, I had a really good you know, epiphany of things in my head and things going on. Things can change on a di uh, drop on a dime. I mean, it's, it's, it, if something bad happens, just wait another day and things change. So I guess that's the point of, of that sideline conversation there. Let me hop back over here. and uh, But I'm not abandoning eBay at all at this point. Obviously, if something comes along better that makes me more money, I'm seriously going to uh, probably look into moving around with that. We do sell on more platforms. eBay used to be 
five, six years ago, 100% of our revenue. Now it's down to the mid halfway mark. It's not my fault. I just take my stuff to where the business is and where I get more money from. So if, say, something sells better, like on Amazon, which many, many NOS, FBA items sell better on Amazon, even with the FBA fees and storage, I can still sell them higher on Amazon than I can on eBay without even paying those fees. So, you know, you, you take your business where where you make the most money. Um, there is no loyalty as a business owner. I have a loyalty to my employees, but that's a little different. There's no loyalty to a fellow business. If the business doesn't do you right, they change, their prices go up. Your goal is to get a lower price, so that means you may have to go somewhere else. If eBay puts me in a spot, or anybody, I would hope that you would do the thing that would be best for your business, as opposed to feeling any loyalty towards something like that. They don't have loyalty towards a seller, per se. They have loyalty towards their stockholders, and you are not a stockholder, chances are, so they're not going to consider you as the same level as them. That's my take on it. That's my opinion. That's from years of doing this. I worked in corporate America, and I'm going to stand by that from what I've seen in my personal life. Um, I'm not a, a money grubber, I call them. I don't care if I'm you know, the richest man. I don't care if, if I'm making a fortune. To, to me, and I know people are going to say you're lying or you don't care. I don't dress fancy. I don't need to. I don't care about that. It's not the money. I, I, I don't. I wish there was some way everybody could understand that. It's not the money, it's the freedom that I get from doing this. Nowhere in my life have, have I had this kind of freedom where I don't worry anymore about going somewhere or working for somebody or when's my next paycheck coming in or am I going to get laid off or what's what's happening with this or what's happening with that. I don't worry about any of that anymore. I don't. I, I stopped having the nightmares, waking up in the middle of the night thinking I'm going to be late for work and all that stuff, even after I hadn't worked for somebody for a couple of years. This is freedom. I, I, I wished everybody would get that as the biggest factor in, in doing your own business. It's freedom. It's freedom. There's a, I work more now um, than I ever did before. But again, it's not like work and I have my freedom. I can stop or do anything I want at any given time. I don't have to specifically be tied to anything anymore at all which is it's hard to get used to and once you've done this for as many years as I have there's no way I'd ever be able to work for somebody else I would just have so much of a conflict with with you know the way they do things and them not understand I mean it was just awful when I worked for people in the past you know the poor decisions drive me nuts you know and that's part of the reason eBay drives me nuts some days because they they make such awful decisions based on what's a temporary quick turnaround for money as opposed to longevity of a company my my personal business and you know all what we do is based on longevity of my business you know what's going to happen next year the two years from now three years from now five years from now where is this going to go and that's what i'm worried about i don't worry about any other junk anymore it's it's freedom i just wished everybody would get that uh, let me pop back over here because it's still frozen. I got you, Annie. I, saw, I, I figured that's what you were saying. Freedom, yep. Freedom is it. No, there are pictures. This is not a podcast. I don't know if you're frozen up there or something, but it looks like I'm frozen on one screen. Uh, in fact, it does look like I have frozen... But it doesn't say I'm frozen. We are going to... Jeez, I don't know. I think we're totally locked here. Uh, or are we? I hate to stop and start again. It looks like I may be frozen. Uh, or am I frozen? Sorry to be a little confused here. I can't see myself moving on one screen. Try reloading one more time. Hopefully I'm not frozen. Hopefully we are doing something. It looks like I am. If I reboot, it might end the, the show, so I'm kind of hesitant to do that. Looks like I'm moving again on the one screen, but not on this one. We're going to try. We stopped and started, so I don't know if that's going to work. Let's give it just a second here. Hang on, let me try one more thing. I think I know what's going on. 
Hang on, folks. Sorry. I think I just figured it out. I think I bumped a cable. Okay, we should be good to go. Sorry, I think I bumped a cable with my glass. Should be able to see and hear me now again. Everything should be fine. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's one of the things about having multiple laptops up. Yes, frozen, but still listening. Okay, you should be fine now. Yeah, frozen. Ta-da. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I think we got it. In fact, it looks like I'm almost caught up here. Yeah, I think I missed some. Let's go back up. Fort, Flo uh, Fort Foster, Florida, 1837 is what pin says, and color is silver. It's probably a modern-day one. It's probably like a souvenir pin if it says Fort Foster, Florida, 1837. There's no way a Fort Foster pin is going to have an 1837 date stamped on it. It's going to be a military pin. That's probably like a 1937 100th, 100th anniversary or something um, would be my guess. Just type in Fort Foster. Uh, foster pin and just that nothing else and see what you get on Terapeak go to Terapeak and try that or do Fort Foster um, pin on a Google search nothing else just Fort Foster pin and that's it I bet you you'll come up with something but knowing Florida collectibles and stuff like that I would say you're not going to see a date. Most of the time, if you see a date that says like 1837, it's on a piece of metal. It's usually something way newer than that, like 90%, 95% of the time. They didn't put dates on stuff. So like if you run into like a buckle that's from the Civil War, and it happens to have 1860-something stamped in it, it's probably a reproduction. There are some like patent dates for like 1860s on the back of Civil War buttons. Those are legit. But for the most part, anything you see say, a, a military or brass thing, for the most part, are not legit if they have a date like that. I'm not saying they're not legit, I should say. They're not from 1837 would be my personal guess on that. That is a Seminole Indian fort, Fort uh, um, Foster. And there wouldn't be a date stamped on it back in those days. I've dug at some of those sites personally myself. We did the Battle of Wahoo, Fort Dade, and a few other sites. So I've been to those sites. Yeah, Duncan's the first place I look for an old photo postcard is Google Photos and then eBay sites. Yeah, that's usually what I do. It just depends. Most of the time I'm able to source down the, the location and can go from there. Yeah, as Duncan's, there is no slowdown. Quantity works. So if you're doing paper and smalls and things like this and stamps and stuff, quantity most every dealer that i know that does similar items has quantity tens of thousands like us i don't know anybody who doesn't have quantity um of these areas that you know that doesn't make a ton of money doing it the ones who are just starting off have to do something else until they get a big quantity up you're not going to be able to you know succeed if you're just listing you know a couple hundred you know every month or so of this sort of item you have to build up a quantity I didn't start selling vintage and stuff I did clothing just like everybody else I did books and stuff but I knew my antiques and vintage I just didn't know how to get them back then nowadays the stuff just falls in my lap it seems these days hey Craig I got land shark picker in the house how you doing Craig haven't seen you in a while I don't get much time to go anywhere else these days it seems Craig's got a pretty good channel. Well, it's a real good channel. I shouldn't just say pretty good, but uh, he's been in a video of mine or two, and we've chatted back and forth, too. Craig's a pretty good guy there, if you get a chance to check him out. Uh, hang on a second. My thing's gone again now on the other one. Uh, hang on. Well, how's my feed so screwed up today? Hang on. Let me get back to where we're at. Do I collect any certain toys myself, Daryl? Um, not anymore. I used to collect and uh, keep like the 80s action figures. Tron, I used to have all those. I had all the Black Hole, the 12 inch, the Migos. I had all the Migos, all the Star Wars. I had all the Micronauts, um, Voltrons. I had all the toys. That's why I know my toys because I used to collect them. But once we had kids, I don't do it. The only thing that we have around now are the Weebles these days. I do military stuff and buttons and poster stamps. Um, I do collect soundtracks from movies myself. I love soundtracks. 
even if I don't listen to everyone, but I probably have listened to them all. Um, I was listening to Kelly's Heroes, um, the soundtrack from them. If you don't know what Kelly's Heroes is, uh, t uh, type that in and look at the trailer. The trailer's probably a terrible trailer, but the movie's really good. Um, uh, those are the classics to me, those type of things. Um, uh, Kelly's Heroes, though, is on the top of my list on those type of movies. Uh, what's the other one with Steve? The Great Escape. That's on my list of all times. Uh, um, Bridge on the River Kwai. Um, there's a lot of good vintage movies like that. Of course, there's new ones. Band of Brothers is like my all-time, one of my favorites. I own the uh, the deluxe edition of that. I don't own many, but that's one that I do own. Oh, I guess I missed something. Is Annie's answering on... Maybe you're talking about records there. Hang on just a second here. Steven, letting my eBay listings run out, then going to pull them. Purchasers can do no wrong. Too much abuse of rules. That may be, but if you're making money, I don't pull something. Um, I know people talk about the morality of the people working at eBay. I can't say everybody at eBay is that way, so it's a business decision whether I stick there or not and do my thing with eBay. And Business-wise, I do well with eBay. It's half of my revenue. Now, if I did quit eBay, we would still be okay. I'd just diversify a little more and, and up my speed. I could just cut off Inkfrog and eBay and just go straight to Amazon and everything else. But right now, there'd be no, no point in killing my eBay business. Again, it's a personal decision. Whatever works best for you, obviously, Stephen. Uh, dollar bills, y'all. I'm pretty sure the eBay rule about photos does not get enforced. It does if somebody complains because I've actually complained and they booted somebody off the site for stealing my photos. True, you can look it up. They they not registered anymore after they did that. That is part of the rules. It just depends. I wouldn't risk doing it. Let's just put it that way. I don't violate any of the rules. If there's a rule violated by me, it was a totally unintentional thing. I don't even ship a overseas postcard in an envelope. Everything goes with tracking. Even if I lose some sales, I don't violate any of that stuff. Like uh, there's a, somebody I know, and he constantly sends stuff out through the wrong method. And I'm I'm not one to you know say you know you shouldn't do that, but he's risking it. You risk it when you do that. And this is my livelihood. I just wouldn't risk anything. It's not even worth it for even a slap on the wrist. I like having my account in good standing. Here's one for Dom, though. I had um, somebody left a, a, a neutral feedback in uh, about a comic book because I didn't include boards and bags for the kind. It was a five comic book lot for like thirty bucks or something, and um, I just bundled them together. They were all sealed properly. They were wrapped in cardboard, in thick cardboard, double wrapped perfectly fine and they were they were mad that I didn't include boards and I literally stated that nothing else was included in the listing and eBay of course removed their their neutral feedback because you can't ask for something not stated or shown in a listing if they leave something like that in the feedback you can have it removed so there's a few people that that saw that feedback as I was talking with them about it. it's not there anymore because it was removed you can't leave comments like that you can't leave like a good feedback, like a positive, and then leave something negative either. You can't technically leave a negative feedback and leave a positive statement. So if somebody does that as well, eBay will remove it. So just FYI. I got about 278s for free in the past couple of weeks, so I've been drenched in them. 200, Annie. That's yeah. I'll show you 10,000, and then we'll see. Yeah, but 200 if you haven't done done records. Yeah, that is a lot for many people. Especially for free. I've picked up a couple thousand for free on a few occasions, but that's rare and far between. Oh, let's see here. Hang on, my feed's still going slow, even on the other screen, so... Yeah, you can't beat free. <clears throat> Price-wise, if I'm getting something for free and I can get a quick 40 bucks, I'm f I'd rather take the 40 bucks on something free usually and just crank it out and get it out of the way than sit there and wait for a couple years on something fragile. 78 is made out of shellac. It's not vinyl. They're very fragile. So 
I, I'm fairly selective these days. If they're not going to sell in a certain length of time or they don't have a high potential, I don't like to mess with them. You know, unless it's over a certain dollar amount, then I probably would, but. Uh, let me pop on down. Um, Marty, Don, when you set up business policies for shipping from scratch, can you identify specific existing listings and apply that policy to only those listings? You set up the, the policy first, Marty. And then you have to go into those listings, and you can just instantly change it. Now, you can gang those up. You can just click edit and just edit the ones that you want to edit. When you get to the edit screen, then you can check the highlight them all in, in the edit page and then check the policy section. Then you can change the policy for all of those all at once. So, yes, you can. You just have to set up the policy first. Every one of my listings is in a policy, every single one. My return policy are all the same. My shipping policies, I've got like eight or nine of them, depending on the item. Like, um, I separate them. So on certain items, I have uh, like um, the buyer pays for return shipping for overseas shipments. That's one thing. Certain items like adult material, which is, as of now, you're not going to be able to sell, even though eBay says they're going to do something about it. I'm not going to believe them at all. But um, because in a matter of a week or two, I'm not going to be able to sell coins or anything. There's no fix for it yet at all. I promise you from what I've seen. And somebody I've talked to at eBay. There's no fix for it right now. So when the end of this month hits and you're forced into it, you can't sell those items. It hasn't been added in. The option hasn't been found. You know, they're piecemealing this together. But anyway, I just totally lost my train of thought. Where were we at? Uh, policies. So with those policies, I've got them separated. You can't send those certain items over. So I've got two different versions of some policies. Um, and as well, like items I'll send through First Class International, like paper items. But if the item weighs over four pounds, I've got another policy because I don't ship directly to anybody overseas for anything over four pounds. I only use global shipping for anything over four pounds. Um, other than like a few specific people that I, I give special um, things to, just because they bought so much from me and I've been dealing with them for years. Some folks from the UK and a few other places too, but hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I do love stamps. Duncan's a big stamp guy, too. Queen Victoria. I've got a huge stock book of Queen Victoria stamps I got in two weeks ago. Yeah, Annie just called the same thing out, the bulk edit. Yeah, you can do it the exact same thing I just said. Yeah, and I'd take $40, obviously. Oh, I just had, there we are. Let me slide down a little bit here. Yeah, there's Craig talking about not everybody understands that the summer slowdown is purely dependent on what you sell. The right items at the right price will sell. That's 100% correct. Yeah, I've been into stamps since I was a kid, so like a small child in single-digit age, just like Duncan. I got my father's when he was um, still around. So I've been into stamps for 40 years probably or better, so I know my stamps. I can go out and cherry pick a, a, a stamp pretty much any day of the week. Uh, let's see where we at. Yeah, I'm still waiting on an answer on that. Um, I need to set up a specific date to do a phone-in to the tech guys at um, HIP at this point, it sounds like. So as soon as I get that situated, I will let everybody know on that, too. You can list them one by one, but again, if they're going to offer me a way to directly import them, all of my advertising items, into HIP, 
you know, maybe that'll be an option. Again, I've been talking to a bunch of folks in the Patreon, my Patreon group too. If I can get a couple, like a million listings, maybe they'll do something because that would be a million all at once listings going to their platform if they allow that option there. So I'm still pushing for a Shopify channel on HIP, truthfully. Uh, Randy Crow, um, welcome. Glad to have you in. I've been to Athens too. There used to be a big uh, antique mall in Athens, right on the edge of town. Patreon is a private paid page. Um, it's $9.99 for the videos, and it's mostly videos, and I answer questions, and people post photos and stuff like that. I do, um, I've been doing live shows. I think I've done eight or nine live shows on Patreon as well. They're usually like two hours. I think I even had one for three hours on one of the days where we're really getting heavy into Shopify. But I put usually at least two videos up. This week, they'll be... Three. I got one more video going up. I had one go up today. There's a hundred and almost 180 videos in Patreon right now, and they're all very specific on topics, and they're all keyworded, so you can go in and um, so you can go in and uh, figure out what you want to watch. You can literally just pick postcards or records or whatever else. Angela, hi from Wyoming. I have been to Wyoming once too. Never stopped. I don't think we spent a night there or anything else, but. Nobleness D, no, I have OCD issues, and I have ADHD since I was like a child. Wished I didn't because they fight. Moses Parado, I am new to your channel. I love your content. I am an eBay seller too. I sell electronics. What do you think about vintage electronics? I do sell, if I sell vintage electronics, I try to stick to parts. I'll take stuff apart. Um, mostly I mess with audio equipment. Uh, reel to reels, I love taking apart. Uh, most of the time I can take a part like a $20 reel to reel and then sell it for a couple hundred in parts. Um, but that's something I've done. I don't like to sell anything heavy or vintage electronics that, that can be scammed. I, I used to do heavier stuff. I don't do them anymore. I stay away from electronics in all honesty. It's just my thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of anything risky. My business is very non-risky. My people pay. I don't have returns. I don't have complaints. Um, I like what I sell. So and I do like vintage electronic stuff, but I, I just it's the other factors are there. My pro and con list for vintage electronics is just full of cons. So I don't have enough pros to do it. Time is money. Yeah, very sure there, Craig. Uh, Steven, as long as 30-day returns allowed, force no eBay for me. I don't mind the 30-day returns. I don't get returns. So 30 days means nothing. When I switched over from the standard, I think it was 7-day or 14-day back then, <coughs> excuse me, to 30-day returns, nothing changed. I don't have any increase whatsoever. I don't sell clothing, though, so you're not going to have people renting my stuff. I, I don't get returns. You know, like last year, maybe we had six. I don't even think we had six, but I'm throwing out a high number. That's a high number for me. Maybe there was two or three. I, I don't. I don't even remember at this point. But it's so small. It's it's no. It's nothing. And a return to me, I pay for the return. If it's a piece of paper, it's just a couple bucks. And sometimes if it's something that's very obviously damaged, I'll just give them free money. I'll just give them the refund and be done with it, and offer them free shipping on another item. That's usually what I do. You know. Hey, Swamp Picker, how are you doing? Good to have you in as well. Uh, yeah, I guess my feed's even all over the place on here. Stun Law One, how are you doing? Pretend it's a podcast. Better Barbie, how are you doing as well? Yeah, I've got a touchy wire over here. That was my fault. There's Duncan with the uh, Patriot call. Naked and laughing, how are you doing this evening? Uh, thank you, Angela. Yeah, Marty, the, it's the hard work. and it, Without doing all this work, I wouldn't have the freedom. And again, I don't care what anybody else says or whatever any, anybody else's reason is to do this. For me, it's honestly... Hand on the Bible, it's honestly freedom. I don't, I can't express enough 
the not having to worry or, or be stressed out about having to go to work or doing anything like that. The, the idea that I don't have to go anywhere. I'm not confined. I'm not tied. That's, that's, that's it. That does it for me. That's what makes me satisfied with what I'm doing more so than anything else. Now we are making real good money right now, better than I've ever had in my life. And I was a regional in DC, Washington DC area. So I mean, I'm used to making a certain amount, but eBay and reselling the whole reselling atmosphere have stepped up my game, you know, immensely. Um, and we're doing pretty good. I, I can't complain at all, money-wise, time-wise, um, satisfactory-wise, freedom-wise. I mean, I don't know what I could complain about right now, other than the pandemic, which has no bearing on it. If I was working for somebody else, I probably wouldn't be working now. And who knows how we'd make our bills ma uh, meet our bills. Uh, let's see here. Freedom is priceless. Uh, let's see here. Let me get past all of this. Must not just be me, because my feed from both screens just pops around. Uh, yeah, I'm thawed. Hit the 103 mark, so we've got at least the 100 mark on here. Hang on just a second. Uh... Yeah, if, if it was frozen, just always reload if that ever happens. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing? Haven't seen you. That's right. It's been a little while. We got Trader Jack's just atop. top. Could I put a link for the camera? If you look down in the description box, Trader Jacks, for this video, um, you'll see it. And I've got four of these now. It's called Cam Stand. If you go to Amazon, I bought it from Amazon. It used to be 100 bucks, but they've actually done a new version of it. And I actually bought an extra one. That's why I have four, to replace the original version. Because the new one has like cork lining. It has a different adjuster on it. Um, the only thing I have an issue with is sometimes the knobs. You really got to cram them tight. Maybe there's some fix to that, but um, it's cam stand though. But again, there is a link to it, the exact one I use down in the description box on every one of my videos. Um, and if, if you don't see it there, click on the one that says my Amazon, I guess it's a fan page or whatever it is. I've got an Amazon page on there too that shows everything that I use. And again, if it's not on that page, I don't use it. Everything on that page I have personally used myself. That cam stand that I have, I got four of them for a reason. Um, I've even altered one and had somebody re-weld something so I can fit them on a table with a bigger gap on the edge. So you can you can have them altered. You know, it cost me 20 bucks to have a piece welded onto it. So no big deal for me. But um, those stands are awesome. I, I, I don't know what I did without them. I use them almost every day of my life. I've got a camera on one now that you're watching me from. I've got another camera there. I've got another camera there. And my other uh, Nikon D5300 is upstairs on a table mounted as well, too. So I've got four camera mounts, and they're all being used right now. Those things are immensely great. 129 I think, plus shipping on those. I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't use it constantly. And, and they've actually improved them. There's three different versions of them. The new version is the best one. I think you can probably find a used one, but I, don't, I would never sell them. It's a steel pipe. I don't see any way on earth this thing's ever going to break for me. Uh, it's a lifetime purchase when you buy those. It's, it's literally the best one. We saw one in the Smithsonian, and that's when I, I realized i got to get one of those. Somebody was taking a photo of something, and they allow that. You, it's the only one you can use in the, the Smithsonian. Yeah, there are some good soundtracks. I don't know the Cam Stand X19. I can just tell you the one that I use off of off of Amazon is the best one I have ever found. Don't know what the other one that Cam Stand that Cornelius is talking about, but the one that I use, I will stand behind any day of the week. I've had the same ones for years now. No issues, no paint. I mean, it's 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 just the best ones I could imagine. And we've went through cam stands, just like my microphone stands. It took me, I've got like three up there we've went through. The, the one I've had now is like the best one I've had. It's it's square tubular um, construction, so it's it's way stronger than the, the round ones. But just be careful on um, 
Yeah, Kathy's committed to doing this full time too. That's I always like to hear that because again, this is my my rest of my life goal. But just be careful on the cam stands. Again, I, I'm not going to speak for the X19 one. I would rather spend the extra money to get what I know works. I can 100% tell you that the cam stands I have, I love. You can also even uh, swap out the rod in there so you can have it sit way up too if you want. Just FYI, you know, there's a welder here I've used many quite a few times that does stuff for us. So well shelving or whatever else or weld me something custom he's welded me mounts and stuff for cam stands and things like that too in the past um, um annie i know it depends but roughly how many listings do you think someone needs up before their cash flow becomes a steady no worries full-time income i've been doing this for 10 years um last three years have been like night and day prior to the prior seven years and you know we'll end it at this conversation here because it was already past eight by farther than i said i would but this is this is something i do get a lot at ten thousand mark i did see a marketable difference in you know routine income of course we list new stuff you know constantly whenever we can so that helps push it um you also have to take into account let's say you're selling 150 items a week you still need to gain so to gain on that you're gonna to have to list 200 every week to compensate for the 150 you're selling you I would rather do three or four hundred a week if I'm selling a hundred a week or 150 a week you you I like to double the amount as, as quickly as I can 10,000 no mark was when I saw a noticeable difference again it depends on what you're listing it depends on if you're selling stuff and, and listing stuff on a daily basis I would rather list 25 uh, items every day of the week then you know like 200 at one day and be done I, I like the aspect of listing every day because it does create some action and it ties in with offers to watchers as well too so usually if I list some new stuff like uh, we just listed some some die cut things and the die cuts there were some new ones that were listed instantly got watchers on them the whole works then they watched other items that I had up for a long time because they made an offer on one of the, the items I just listed. So it ties it all together. If you constantly list stuff, you're constantly going to get sales. If I list 100 items, 3 to 5%, bare, bare bones minimum of those 100 items I list each day will be sold the very first day they go up. Every single day I do that. Sometimes it's 20%, sometimes 30 or 40%, sometimes half of what I list that day is sold. It's a good item. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's just the way it works. You know, and I don't, I don't worry if it sells quick or not. You know, it's it's a sales a sale. We've got just so much stuff; it doesn't really matter. Um, quantity rules the game for us. I I, I I can never say that enough. Quantity rules the game. It's hard to even think about not having this much quantity and how I would have gotten to this point without doing all the other stuff that we did. I mean, this is a a journey we've taken, and it's taken me down this road. So it's taken me down this road here. Uh, you know, I, I didn't I didn't make this path. This path found me. I, what I sell now is is what what happened to be what I found and I was able to get it. I was able to do the pros and cons. It worked out. I quit the clothing and this is where my path is going and it has been increasing. Glad to have been out of clothing and stuff like that. Again, quantity though is the most important thing in this sort of thing. I treat my store like an antique store, and an antique store, what, what they do is it sits in the store until someone comes in to buy it. I don't worry if I've got a, a antique store full of stuff because it's going to sell. And since I have so much stuff up, every day I sell enough to pay all my bills and move forward. It, there's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, quantity rules the game in the stuff that I sell. Now, and, and there's other cases or other people may only sell a couple dozen items every week, but they could make as much as me. It, it just depends on what you sell. You know, uh, there's no right or wrong. There's no specifics that will work for you and that won't work for somebody else. I mean, it, it's all got to be tailored towards your own specific business. But if you want that number, Annie, 10,000 is, is all I can, I can tell you. Um, touch on this one more time. Finally done listing through eBay. I don't list on eBay anymore. I list through Inkfrog. Everything. I don't do anything on the eBay platform technically. It's all done through Inkfrog. 
One thing I have noticed doing it through InkFrog is I don't get an error warning when I'm listing that it says it's not you, it's us. I haven't seen a single error at all of any kind, any way, shape, or form on InkFrog. So, you know, good, bad, or different. I don't make a dime telling you anything about InkFrog or Shopify or eBay. So I'm not profiting off of marketing them or doing anything like that. So anyway, hopefully that answers that for you, Annie. Um... Yeah, it might be the same one, Cornelius. I don't know, but I know the guys that I get the cam stand I see here. Um, I'm very happy with them. Again, I, there's no X number on them that I know of, but, you know, either way, I, I would, wouldn't know what I'd do without those cam stands. They support a DSLR camera that weighs, like, poundage. They, they're holding up multiple DS5300s, and the DS5300 is the same weight as the 73s or any of those, the, the, the Nikon, so... And that's what I use. I use a DS5300 for all my item photos. Um, other than that, we use the the uh, Epson DS510 for the uh, scanner or the 66000 series uh, double uh, double scan bed uh, flatbed, which I've shown you all as well, too. But we're going to leave it off at there. Um, Sorry if I missed some questions. I never get to everything, but I do try to answer every one from start to finish um, with more than just a one-word yes or no kind of answer to it. Um, things are going good, so hopefully they're going good with everybody else. I, I have heard several people talking about the slowdown, but again, it depends on what you sell. So I'm not worried about any slowdown. We're literally looking at fourth quarter right this very minute. That's all our goals are at this point is fourth quarter. Um, I'm not worried about buying inventory. If you're if you're new to doing this, inventory should be your main concern now. Right now, it's the cheapest it should be anywhere else. In fourth quarter, third quarter even, the price goes up for your merchandise. So you're not going to be able to source it for the same rates you will now. So now's the time to, to source. You source when it's cheap, and you sell when it's high in third and fourth quarter. That's what retail is. That's what businesses do. You sell it when it's the most expensive to sell. You know, the most uh, you get the most value for it, I should say. So, and you buy it when it's the cheapest. That's why a lot of companies buy years in advance. Our Christmas was done for this coming up a year more than, well, close to a year ago now. At the, well, not a year. We we did uh, Christmas like in October of last year, somewhere in that range. I'd have to look at my calendar again, but I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. We are going to end it here. Again, Keep an ear out for some announcements. Uh, you will hear from me and Dom. Um, just keep your ear out. There will be some stuff going on. But I do appreciate everybody coming on, and I hope you are doing well.